The harvest is a huge success. Every animal, great and small, toil to gather every skerrick of hay. Except the pigs, of course. Since they're the smartest, they naturally take to guiding and supervising their comrades. Throughout the summer, Animal Farm works like a well-oiled machine. Everyone has more to eat and more time to rest. But the real champion of the farm is Boxer. He asks one of the roosters to wake him up extra early so he can get a head start on the day's tasks. Even though Boxer seems to work harder now than ever, his personal motto is, I will work harder. Ah, oh, we love you, big guy. There is no work on Sundays. Instead, a weekly ceremony is held. The animals proudly hoist their new flag and a big meeting is held in the barn. During the meeting, future work is planned and ideas are debated. Napoleon and Snowball do most of the talking, but they often disagree. Hmm, could tension be brewing? At the end of the meeting, the animals sing Beasts of England and enjoy the afternoon off. Talk about well organised. The pigs now have their own headquarters where they study every aspect of farming. Snowball forms committees and organises literacy classes for the animals. Most manage to learn the Seven Commandments, although this is hard for the simpler souls. They learn the basic version. Four legs, good. Two legs, bad. Which goes up on the barn wall as well. In the meantime, Napoleon focuses on educating Jessie and Bluebell's puppies. As soon as they are weaned, he carries them into the loft and becomes their sole carer. How thoughtful of him. By the way, it turns out the milk did go to the pigs after all. And all the apples. But not because the pigs like milk and apples. Oh no. Since the pigs are the brain workers of the farm, they must have all the milk and apples to preserve their health. You can't argue with science, comrades. News of what had happened on Animal Farm begins to spread. Snowball and Napoleon send out pigeons to neighbouring farms to make sure of it. In the meantime, Mr Jones drowns his sorrows in the Red Lion pub. He complains to everyone about his misfortune, which makes the other farmers anxious. What if they too are overthrown by an animal rebellion? Mr Pilkington and Mr Frederick, the neighbouring landowners, start spreading rumours about Animal Farm. They invent stories of cannibalism and cruelty to make Animal Farm seem like the worst place on earth. But the rumours don't take, and soon animals everywhere are singing Beasts of England. The humans are furious. Then, in early October, Jones returns with a vengeance. This means war. Luckily, Snowball has studied military strategy and quickly gives orders. As Jones and his men approach, the animals give a short, sharp attack before retreating. The men, thinking they've won, run after the animals, straight into a trap. Snowball leads another charge and Jones fires his shotgun, injuring Snowball and killing a sheep. But Snowball doesn't stop. He flings Jones into a giant pile of poo. But the most fearsome warrior is Boxer. He rears up on his giant iron-shod hooves and strikes a stable boy, knocking the life out of him. The men panic and run in all directions, but they're each attacked by animals, hell-bent on revenge. Even the cat gets amongst it. The men bolt for the main road, pursued by the geese. Victory for the animals. Again. But not everyone is celebrating. Back in the yard, Boxer stands sorrowfully over the stable boy's lifeless body. He didn't mean to kill him. Snowball reminds Boxer that war is war, but he is inconsolable. Hey, where's Molly? She's found hiding in her stall. War is not her strong suit. 
It's then discovered that the stable boy has made a full recovery and run away. Boxer had only stunned him. Phew! The flag is hoisted, Beasts of England is sung, and the murdered sheep is given a solemn funeral. Snowball and Boxer are also awarded with a new military decoration, Animal Hero, First Class. While the dead sheep is awarded with Animal Hero, Second Class. This day shall forever be known as the Battle of the Cowshed. Jones's gun is set at the foot of the flagpole to be fired twice a year, on October 12, the anniversary of the Battle of the Cowshed, and on Midsummer's Day, the anniversary of the Rebellion. Another proud day for the animal kingdom. But winter is coming, and Molly's behaviour is worrying. Could there be trouble on the horizon? We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.